What inspires you to try for the civil services? So, uh, besides job security, so for me the prime motivation is job satisfaction. So, uh, all of us uh, uh, have to go just uh, look for a, a motivation, which is not just the salary. But for me, so the prime drive is uh, working for the nation and contributing to the society. Okay. Yes. And uh, do you think you possess the requisite qualities needed for being a successful civil servant? Yes. What are they? So first and foremost is the leadership quality. It is not just meeting, but working as a team. So second is uh, my determination and mm -hmm. grit. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, sir, uh, is the ability for me to tackle uh, the pressure situations. Okay. Yes. What about qualities like honesty, integrity, empathy for the yes. poor? Yes. Yeah, these are also important yes. qualities. Yes. Okay. Yes. What is the scope and mandate of right to life? So, right to life comes into Article 21. So, it is a, uh, it is a right, fundamental right with the widest scope. It includes within it the right to health, the right to die as well, as to recognize that is So, uh, how do you uh, reconcile with death sentence when we have a right to death? Yes, a right to life. Yes. Uh, how do we justify that sentence? Sir, according to the Supreme Court, sir, the life imprisonment should be the norm and death sentence should be the exception. That is what the rarest of the rare and I'm not yes. on that. Yes. Since we have I have I'll say that I have a right to life. Yes. Uh, you cannot impose death sentence and it is uh, unconstitutional. Can I say it? Sir, uh, a person can make a, make such an argument. But however, sir, in our criminal justice system, the death sentence is there. You, uh, is the right to life absolute? So there can be some limitations as well, sir. What is due process of law? Yes, sir. The due process of law suggests that uh, the law which has been made by the government, the life, uh, sir, as, you, as you said, the life can be taken away if it is under the due process of law. It's couched in a negative way. No, no person shall be deprived of his life. Just see, it's not yes, a yes. You, are, you have a right to that. Yes, yes. Now, uh, uh, governor and president, uh, what are the discretionary paths and why the tilt uh, is more towards more discretionary paths for, for the governor? First, you tell us about the discretionary paths and then why the tilt? So, the first discretionary, uh, the discretionary paths are that uh, the, they have to, in general, both the president and the governor have to follow the aid and advice of the council of ministers, but they can send the uh, matter back for reconsideration. Along with that, sir, they send to bill under article uh, triple one, the president has the veto powers as well. Uh, along with, sir, uh, if there is a harm parliamentary or harm legislative assembly in that matter as well. And so the reason for the discretionary power is that, sir, in our uh, in our constitution and polity, sir, uh, we have to have a nominal head as well, so as to maintain the balance and the stability in the polity. There was some controversy with regard to governor's address in some state. Have you heard of that? To be specific, Kerala. So, yes. there was, sir, but uh, I'm not able to exactly recall. Okay. Uh, Extradition and deportation. Mm -hmm. what, are, what is the difference between these two terms? Um, sir, I can be a little wrong on this. But sir, extradition is under a treaty wherein uh, if a country A, under country A, a person has committed some crime, then uh, and he is at country B. Then is it a judicial process or an executive process? If there is a treaty, that country can send the person back or there is a process. In so extradition, I think, sir, it is a judicial process and deportation is an executive. And recently somebody was deported from the United Kingdom. Uh, are you aware? Something to do with cricket? Somewhat exactly. Okay, the ICJ case, India, the last case, and into the last case India had at the International Court of Justice. What was the preliminary objection and why by Pakistan? Sir, it's regarding the Indus. Water tree. No, no. Mm -hmm. Jasper. Oh, yes, sir. Good motion, yeah. Yes, sir. 
Sir, India wanted consular access to pollution matters and the Pakistani government was denying it. There was a preliminary objection before the ICJ. What was it? Why? You know, there was two two parts of that whole uh, case. Did you follow that? So I did, but the memories are a bit uh, a bit hazy. Okay, is there um, something on the uh, with regard to international law and international affairs in our constitution? Yes, sir. So the last DPSP is uh, related to maintaining international peace and uh, um, international peace and harmony. And with regard to lawmaking, do we have some uh, one of in any of the lists? So in so in the uh, sentence that you were talking about, so uh, so in the union list, it's a union matter because oh, thank, you. thank you. It is said that in international relations, yes. there is no permanent friend or foe, yes. but national interest is permanent. But uh, there is permanent interest. Yes. Can you elaborate it with examples? Uh, so, uh, national interest is the prime motiv prime motivation of fulfilling foreign policies. So, uh, one can take the um, instance of US in this. So, uh, during the Cold War, Soviet Union was its prime enemy, as suggested, and it had a temporary sort of temporary understanding with China, briefly for some period. But today, as we see in context of trade wars, and there is an entire difference between the two countries. And even in the South China Sea, there are differences between them. In the Indian context? So, um, in the Indian context, sir, the, um, so I'm trying to frame a good example, but, uh, so, um, in the US, Indo Russia? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, historically, in, in the initial years, we were a bit aversive of uh, collaborating with US. But after the Cold War ended, sir, India has been growing closer to the country. Sir, with Russia, relations have been always steadfast, which were more cemented during the Cold War. Today, the relations are somewhat steady, but they are at the same level to some extent as our relations with the US. Uh, USA has a democratic government, we also have a democratic government. What are the basic differences between the two, or they are the same? So, uh, democracy and a political system will be same because everyone, every person has one vote. But so in the normative sense, the democracy can have differences. Uh, so, uh, in uh, the US, as it is a developed country, people tend to vote less. But in India, people in have the right to vote. So, I am talking about the systems. Okay, the democratic systems of how they so vote. They follow a government. Yes, sir. What are the differences? So, they follow a presidential form of government. And we follow a parliamentary form of government. They vote but for. But we also have a president. They also have a president. So uh, we, they have direct elections for the president. We have an indirect election. A direct elections are for the parliament. Anything else? Um, so. Um, there are a lot of differences. I'm yes, asking you to pick up that you can. So uh, in there, the federal concept is very much uh, is very much followed, where there there the states have a lot of powers. Here we follow um, more of a concept of unitary government with some federal government with a lot of unitary features as well. How long can they adjust in the Supreme Court serve? Up to what age? Um, in India? So it is still um, 70 years. Huh? 70 years. I can't remember. We're not sure. So it's either 65 Okay, who can be made a judge in the Supreme Court? So, uh, who is eligible? Yes. Yes, sir. he should. Uh, be, he should have been a high court judge, and uh, along with that, a tenure of five years, or should be a practicing judge in the high court for at least ten years, or the president can even appoint an eminent jurist as well. So anybody can. A, a foreigner who is working uh, here can, can also be appointed. No, sir. He should be a citizen of India. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very yes, important yes, aspect. Yes. You forget that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you have opted for. Police also, isn't it? Yes. Why police? So, uh, so giving the civil service, being in the civil services, I'm ready to ready to join any service. So it's not that I'll skip any other service. I'm fine with IAS, IPS, or IFS even. So any service will do. Yes, any so, service. So you're giving these preferences only for for, for the namesake. 
No sir, I am already in service, but these yeah. are not for names sake. Yeah. I wanted to give the exam again and for me sir, police... What sir, are the challenges to a policeman? So first, starting from the personal step, the biggest challenge is compromise in the personal life. So second is the entire... Uh, compromise? Work. So it's not a compromise, but we have a trade-off is there because it's a very <coughs> hectic, uh, very hectic job. So uh, secondly, the problem is the uh, the entire police system which is there in India. So certain reforms are required, which makes and the uh, inadequate reforms. So this creates challenges for a regular policeman to work at the ground level. And so thirdly, the political pressure also to some extent exists, which makes functioning a bit difficult. So the police made uh, be made uh, independent of the uh, executive. No, sir, definitely not. Why? So some amount of accountability is also required. Can't an account, uh, inbuilt accountability system be built up in the system? Yes, of course it can be. As the okay. sir, the casting directives they suggested that the uh, state uh, security commission, national security commission should be performed, mm -hmm. and they some states they have formed so. But sir, uh, more reforms are required in the function so that these bodies can properly function. Okay. Yes, Nambi. Yes, I see that you are interested in following international relations. Yes, sir. Yes. You've been participating in model UN competitions. Yes, sir. IFS is right up on your list. Yes, sir. What are you following particularly in international <laughs> relations? Which areas interest you? Ma'am, firstly, it is the neighborhood policy, and more recently, it has been the Afghanistan issue as well. Mm -hmm. And ma'am, secondly, are the are India's relations with the major powers like US, Russia, and China. And ma'am, thirdly, Middle East is also very much in use. And in the model UN, what did you talk about? Which ma'am uh, regarding which the causes? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> ma'am, the DTOM in which I attended, uh, it, uh, it was about the Eurozone debt crisis. And the second MUN which I listed, it was about the Syrian crisis at that time. Tell me about the Syrian crisis at today's time. Yes, so at that time, not yes. today. <laughs> what is the situation, ma'am? Uh, it is said that the Syrian civil war today is almost over. The last province of Syria, that is Idlib, it is under contention right now, ma'am. The dispute is between Syria. <coughs> it wants to capture control over it finally, but however, since it touches Turkey and there is a huge humanitarian crisis created. So Turkey is also very much apprehensive that what will be the future there. And there's Russia. And Russia is also there. Which side are these two countries on in the Syrian uh, war? And Russia has uh, is in alliance with the Syrian government of mm -hmm. Bashar al-Assad, mm -hmm. and uh, Turkey is on the opposite camp. And um, recently, Russia and Turkey have broken a kind of peace deal, so have to maintain peace over there in Italy. A 14 kilometer. Yes, I'm calling it. Yes. Which they will jointly patrol. Yes. Any chances of success uh, in the ceasefire being maintained? Ma'am, that it's a very uncertain situation. Why? Ma'am, because uh, uh, I've read newspaper reports yes, and, yes. The, and the people at the ground level say that it, it that the ceasefire will be there for a few weeks, but after a few months, then again the Syrian government will start some sort of offensive. And the opposition forces also will be yes, rested. Yes, what was the Syrian crisis? It is a follow from a particular movement. Mm -hmm. Which one? Um, Arab Spring. When did that start? I started in around 2011 from Tunisia. All right. Now tell me, you talked about the neighborhood policy you are interested in. Uh, what is India doing in its neighborhood policy? Ma'am, in general. And has it been successful? Ma'am, first is that India has, since for the past four five years, we are following the neighborhood first policy, mm -hmm. where the uh, focus is on greater engagement with the countries. We have extended LOCs to Bangladesh. We are also talking about maritime and defense cooperation with our neighbors. And ma'am, as far as the success of this policy is concerned, ma'am, there are significant challenges as well. The biggest challenge is from Pakistan. And, and the even bigger bigger challenge is that India faces competition from China in South Asia. Uh, but we already, even before this neighborhood first <coughs> policy, we were already focusing on the neighborhood through two regional organizations. Yes. Which ones? And first was the, the SARC 
and we were also going for big stack as well. Yes. Well, why didn't they take off? I mean, what's the status today of Sark and Beam Stake? Mom, it is said that Sark today, Sark today is at almost a standstill, mm -hmm. and it's primarily because of India's tensions with Pakistan. Pakistan was uh, deliberately going for stalling all the agreements which India was proposing. And um, as an alternative, India started to go for a SARC minus Pakistan initiative in the form of BIMSTEC. Mm -hmm. We have tried to revive it, and ma'am, but more concerted efforts are required. More concerted effects, and what else is required to keep it? The charters of these organizations should be strengthened, the secretariats yes, should be empowered, yes, and they should have some development fund. Yes, ma'am. Don't you think if they have to yes. execute. Uh, and for that, uh, India, I think, should collaborate with third countries like US and Japan mm -hmm. so that it, uh, it can serve as a counter for China in terms of economic development of these South okay. Asian countries. All right. Today is Women's Day. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is the Me Too movement since you're following international? Yes, ma'am. What is. Ma'am, uh, it originated with whom? Ma'am, it originated in the US entertainment industry with uh, one producer, Harvey Weinstein. No, before that it went to Tarana Burke. She was the one yes, in 2006. And then it oh. took off slowly and then I Harvey think. Weinstein, of course, yes, escalated the whole process. Yes, what is the status of that case today? Ma'am, he has been uh, convicted of the charges which were given. Two charges, yes, yeah. And he has been in jail. 29 years. He faces the possibility of 29 yes. years. Uh, what do you think of the movement, your, you yourself? What are the pros and cons? Ma'am, the pros were that it gave a chance to women who all the for all these years were feeling a bit more uh, insecure that if they come up in the public towards their issues and sexual harassment at work that they have faced, mm -hmm. they would be criticized. But give confidence to women to come out in the public. Okay. Ma'am, but the main issue here is that uh, the problem is who will verify these claims, hmm. who will veri verify the allegations. Ma'am, that is a very difficult issue because once the allegation is made on the on a person, then his entire image is at stake. So it can be misused. Yes, ma'am. Attract libel laws and unnecessary kind of yes, so court cases. Um, You've heard of Neutron Jack? Recently there have been, even in uh, opinion pages and newspapers, about Neutron Jack. And you have to give a little more hint on that. Jack Welch? No, I'm not <laughs> Okay, C of G. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what was he, why was he called Neutron? Ma'am, I... He believed in downsizing. So he would regularly cull 10% of the staff from below and so other imitators started following him and this led to social uh, kind of disturbance. Yeah, I'll read on that. he read on that yeah. and why he was called Neutron because he figured quite in every newspaper he passed away last week. Mm -hmm. Yes ma'am. Yeah, it's just a brush up, you know and he kind of... Uh, <coughs> Uh, what you call uh, reshaped the corporations of the 21st century and also led to the Silicon Valley yes. kind of uh, mm -hmm. enterprises to come, entrepreneurs to come forward. So that's uh, yes. an important thing. I'll check on. Okay, thank you. Hi, Nathan. You are from Punjab. So recently the budget was presented in the Punjab Assembly. Uh, can you tell us some of the salient features? Yes, sir. The so first and most important development was that the age of retirement has been reduced to 58 years. Yeah. Secondly, sir, they will be providing for free education uh, till 12th class. Earlier it was for girls only, yes. but now for all. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, Is so it a taxless budget? Yes, sir. It's a tax. It is suggested that it's a tax. Budget. Okay, today is International Women's Day. Yes. So, can you tell us about some of our own constitutional provisions which safeguards women's equality and promotes women empowerment? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, first is Article 15. Yeah. It provides a fundamental right to. Before that, there is something. So, Article 14. Equality. Right to equality. So it starts, yes. it all starts from oh, there. 14, yes. Yeah. So then 14. we had 15 as well. And so then uh, 
say along with that uh, article 20, 20, 25 to 16 20. also talks about the right e to uh, equality of opportunity in employment. employment. Yeah. Yes. So uh, after that we have fundamental rights to religion as well uh, which offers equal right to equality or freedom of religion to women so that they can go to places of worship as well. And okay, that, that would that would come right to equality yes. and yes, yes, freedom of. Yes. There are two constitutional amendments which guarantee, you know, representation of women in our democratically decentralized institutions. Yes. Which are those? So these were the seventy fifth and the seventy fourth constitution. Amendments. So these provided for 33% reservation of women in local self-government. Yeah, not only as members, elected yes. members, but also chairpersons. chairpersons. Yes. Okay. You have heard about the IBC? Yes, sir. What is it? Bankruptcy. <clears throat> Why was this code enacted? So, uh, the earlier issue was that the uh, bankruptcy and the insolvency proceedings were going on for very long. They were mm -hmm. taking years and years. And secondly, sir, the issue was that the uh, the uh, proceeds that we get from insolvency were also very less. Mm -hmm. And therefore, sir, to, uh, to solve these problems and more importantly, to facilitate ease of doing business, the IBC code was brought. So under this, there have been some judicial organs which yes. have been set up. What mm -hmm. are those? So we have the uh, National Company Law Tribunal. And the debt recovery tribunal. Company law appellate tribunal. Appellate so has been, has been tribunals and then yes. above this so appellate yes. tribunal. Okay, now your subject is uh, international relations and political science. So let me first ask you a couple of questions on who propounded the theory of separation of powers, which political philosopher? So uh, it was propounded by Montesquieu. Yeah. Yes. Do we have separation of powers in our constitution? Yes, sir, it is there, but it's not watertight. So okay. We, yes. Okay. What is uh, the economic philosophy of laissez-faire? What does it mean? So laissez-faire means minimal state. That is, the government will not be interfering in the economic sphere. It will restrict itself to more administrative activities. Okay. Have you heard of Harold J. B. Lasky? Yes. What was his political philosophy? So it was more in the nature of uh, social liberalism. So he advocated that not just civic and civil and political rights are there, we also should have social economic rights as well. It had a nomenclature. Pluralism. No, Fabian socialism. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir. And uh, was it embraced by any of our political leaders? Yes. Sir. Sir so, Jawaharlal Nehru, first Prime Minister. <coughs> okay, now uh, I will end by asking you a question on international relations. Mm, what is our relationship with Nepal at the moment? How would you assess it? So, uh, India has uh, maintained its relationship with Nepal. So, in the past few years, there were some issues regarding. Any the... irritant of late? So, uh, Yes, sir, there there were some there were some recent developments uh, about so there is a project I can't recall that project in the past last month there was some project. It's not a project; it's with regard to a geographical Kala. territory. So there is a dispute over Kalapani as well. Exactly, yes. exactly. Now, if I say the U.S. Taliban deal was a dot deal. So sorry, sir. Was it dot 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 dot, dot deal? Yes. Sir. Would you agree? So, uh, so in a diplomatic sense, I would say that it is an uh, endeavor for lasting peace. So in my personal opinion, I am too very uncertain about that whether this would be achieved or not. Why? So, because uh, this agreement is just between US and Taliban and the entire elephant in the room, that is the intra-Afghan dialogue. So, that is a very huge question mark that what is the result of it? What is the result going to be? There is some element based in Pakistan, but it's also a part of the Taliban and the US has proscribed that organization. Which is that uh, 
and India is very much concerned about that particular network. So it's the Hakani network. Network, exactly. The leader of the Hakani network is also the deputy leader of yes, the Taliban, Taliban yes. on which the US has announced a reward of 10 yes. million US yes. dollars. So nothing has been mentioned about Hakani whether he he would be away from mm -hmm. Taliban territory or not. Okay, that just about sums up your interview. So let me give you uh, an assessment and what you can expect from the UPSC board. So you are from Punjab, so expect some questions about Punjab, the budget recently presented, the drought situation in Punjab, yes. how Punjab is faring in economic indicators and social indicators, etc., etc., GDP and all that, you know, both the indicators. Then uh, you have your subject is also international relations and you have also mentioned international relations to be your interest, area of interest. So obviously expect a large number of questions on international relations, which we did, yes. right? Which you handled, to my uh, opinion, you handled uh, well. Uh, political science also, there will be questions. So I did ask you a couple of questions. There will be questions on constitutional uh, matters. Uh, constitutional matters, criminal law matters, recent judgments of the Supreme Court. So follow the newspapers. The courts are very busy these days with spate of, you know, cases um, going to them. Um, right to life and how does it square up with the death sentence? Um, you need to be a little more clear on that. So uh, read up the constitutional provisions on that and and the court decisions, right? And uh, let me, yeah, that's about, I mean, there was no question on which you really fumbled. Uh, you have been doing quite well. So keep it up and all the best. When is your interview? I'm going mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Achha, one Very thing, you said that I will be wrong on this. Never begin with a negative yeah. uh, sentence. You say that uh, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm but not sure. Make a guess. Yeah. Okay, sir. Is it a question of saying things? Yes. Okay. Eye contact was okay, no? Only yeah, yeah. Yeah. speak. Only yeah. the one who asks the question. Yeah. Finish and then you can throw a glance around, but not. Yeah. Okay. Sir, I have two questions. Yes. yes. Sir, first is that uh, am I being, being brief? Yes. Which yeah. is good, not Online. to the point, to yeah, the point. Absolutely. because if you wander, you get entrapped into uh, more that's questions. A, that's a positive trait. That's say. a positive trait. Well, because yeah. uh, uh, in my last interview, probably I was speaking a little more. So this time I decided Absolutely. Myself. Yeah, that's the way to go about it. Yeah. Minimum <laughs> info you give to the panel. <laughs> Because when we answer further questions, further questions yeah. should be engendered. Yeah. Uh, and so the second question is: In my last mock, they were saying that I was being a little monotonous. My answer was one coming out very naturally, and they were seeming a bit mucked up. So do my answers seem like that? No, I don't. Get I don't the think the impression. Uh, no. Yeah. I Anybody thought you were genuinely following international from my yes, point yes, of view. Yes. I thought. Oh, yeah. it's very difficult on anybody's part to prove that uh, you it have all by up book. I mean, we have to mug up also. If you are sure so about your facts, then obviously yes. it will come out confident. Yes. The way you so said, one you one did well. Yeah, you did well. Don't worry. All the best. All the best to you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.